Hey up troops, hey Littleton here again with another video and this time we're doing the opposite to the 5 best defender video that we did a few weeks ago and we're looking at the best 5 attackers in Siege in 2023. Now just as a precursor, let me get this in. There's no right and wrong in this, this is just my opinion. There's two operators who I was really juggling with. The second operator that I mentioned in this video, I was really juggling as to whether I put Ram or Dockerby ahead of the operator that I put in. I really weighed it up. Look, I think Dockerby and, and Ram straight away should definitely be in the conversation for the top five. And if I made this video on another day and I was in a different mood, then maybe I'd put Dockerby in instead of operator number two. But I just had to wait up and I've gone with the other one instead. So look, I'm aware that other operators are very good. However, if you've got a different opinion to me, get it in the comments and let me know. I know there's loads of people who are fans of different operators and I'd be keen to hear what your thoughts of the top five are. So what we'll do, just like we did with the Defender video, I'll run through all five operators, I'll run through a bit of a why are they good, but also I'll try and throw a bit of, like a couple of hints and tips in there. Just as a precursor, please don't think I'm repeating myself. Some of the uh, operators that I mentioned in this video, I've also done like recent videos of as well. So some of the things that I say, I've probably mentioned in other videos. So if you think I'm repeating myself, I apologize profusely. But I'll go through just a few like, not so much tips and tricks, but a bit of a like, this is why they're good and this is how you can use them well, things like that. I think everyone's had enough waffling, including me. Let's get stuck into it. First on the list, attacker number one, and I do believe this is the best attacker in the game at the minute. It's none other than Ace. Absolutely unbelievable. He's the best hard breacher, arguably the best attacker. Now, when I say the best hard breacher, don't get my words mixed up. What I'm saying is he's the best hard breacher overall. Thermite opens walls better. Habana's open, uh, opens more hatches, but Ace is the best of the bunch in the middle. He's the best operator in the game, and I'm confident in saying that when it comes to attack. Now, if you want a couple of little tips on Ace, I did a video literally four or five videos ago. There's a whole video about tips on Ace, but if you haven't seen that and you want one, if you want to open nice Ace holes so you don't have to vault through walls, don't open like one Ace uh, hole here and one Ace hole here so you've got two vaultable holes. You don't want to be vaulting through the reinforcements. Instead, look for the bolts down the middle of each side of the reinforcements and throw one ace charge on bolt number two and one ace charge on bolt number four, or if you're counting from the bottom, one and three. But I always count from the top, so bolt two, bolt four. You'll see the hole it makes. It's much better than making two. It also means... Just wait for this racket to end. It also means that you don't have both sides of the wall open. So if you need to, you can still use this side of the wall as a bit of cover. If you open both sides, then you've got no cover from rafters. So you can at least use this as a bit of cover. Don't forget Ace as well. If I just grab Warden here. Don't forget Ace can also get rid of shields. People forget this all the time. But it's like, just throw a Salmer at a shield. It'll get rid of the shield. He has one of the best guns in the game. Shoot the radio. He has one of the best guns on attack, if not the entire game. Arguably the best gun in the entire game. If you can control recoil, it's so, so good. He's unbelievable. It's just not even a question in my mind that Ace is one of the best attackers, if not the best attacker in my mind. And the beauty of Ace, right, by the way, is if you don't want to play Ace as a hard breacher, you can take Thermite or a Banner as the breacher, and Ace can absolutely play Flex. Ace can absolutely get rid of castle barricades or get rid of shields from below and all sorts of other good tricks that Ace can do. Ace doesn't have to be the hard breacher. He's that good and he's that versatile. 2-2 two, two speed, great weapons, great secondary uh, gadgets as well with breaching charges or claymores. He just he does everything, man. I, I, he's probably my favorite operator to play. And of course, you get the sweet elevate gun skin. Go and buy that if you haven't. One more thing. I haven't, I've only got... Um, sorry, I haven't got any ace charges left, but... If this hatch was electrified and the floor here was soft, Ace could actually open this himself. All you need to do is put the Salma charge there and there on the floor. And as long as the branches or legs of the Salma charge go over the hatch, it'll open an electrified hatch as well. That's also in that Ace video that I did a few days ago. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it. Ace is the best attacker in Siege. Thank you. Thanks, Warden. Next best attacker in the top five, and this is not in order. Now, I know I did Ace first, but this isn't in order. I'm putting Zero in the top five, and I'm confident about it as well. Again, I don't want to feel like I'm repeating myself in videos because I've literally just done a zero video about four or five videos ago as well. And you should go and watch that if you want some good zero cams. I'm going to show the example here on Bank where you can get three flank drones on three staircases and less than 30 seconds of a round starting. Starting here at Jewelry Front, we shoot the default cam, which is, come on Andy, there. Then just replace that cam with the zero cam. Right, so that's within 10 seconds of the round starting. Then you run to the top square cam, which is on this window here. Get tight to the window. Shoot out the barricade. Get tight to the window, and you'll see the cam a bit underneath. There we go. Get rid of that. You've got to make sure you get rid of a bit more of the barricade. 
Stick another zero cam there. How far into the round are we now? Maybe 20, 30 seconds. Repel to the top of the roof here. Get your zero August launcher out again. And stick your next cam on this skylight here. Within 30 seconds, we've got a main stairs flank. A square stairs flank. And a main lobby stairs flank. Within 30 seconds of the round starting. The enemy are not going to find any of them. Could potentially see that if there's someone around the top of main stairs. It's absolutely unbelievable. Couple with this, the fact that he brings uh, a Gon 6, plus hard breach charges, plus he has four cameras, not three, and he also has two drones. He has six bits of intel on top of that. He's, he's absolutely unreal. And the beauty of it is as well, because he brings so much utility in terms of hard breach charges and Gon 6s, he's actually a great solo queue operator as well. Um, yes, he's probably, oh, I say probably, he's definitely better in a team when it comes to playing zero. If you can get in a stack and you can give call outs to your team and put these cameras up and let your stack call off these cameras, you're going to win more rounds if zero's on your team. There's a reason Valk is considered the strongest or one of the strongest defenders in the game at the minute. It's because she gives so much intel to the team and it's the same for zero. Don't forget, by the way, again, if you've watched the zero video, you'll know this, but this crosshair that zero has, it means something. So you see like there's two lines with a, an arrow pointing down. And if we put it on the soft wall, the arrow then points up and down. So what that means is if we fire um, the camera at this wall, you can't penetrate the other side of the wall because this is a solid wall. This is a soft wall. So those two arrows are saying the camera can go through the wall and can loop back in this direction. If you point it to the sky, you'll see that the arrows are non-existent on both sides. And that just means the camera won't land and you can't see either way. But if you put it on, if you're, if you're like struggling to find out where the soft floor is and you think, well, where, where is the soft floor? You can see the arrow the, the arrow is not pointing up, so it means the camera can't go through the floor. When you put it there, it means the camera can go through the floor. So that means this is hard floor, this is soft floor. Really useful. It's the same on, his, on the actual launcher itself. Um, if you see the, the green display, you can see the arrows changing on the green display. There's no way Zero can't be considered top five at the minute, and we haven't even talked about his guns either. SC-3000K, one of the best feeling guns for me, man. The damage output is pretty high. The recoil is pretty low. You can put an extended barrel on it if you want to. And of course, you've got the wonderful MP7 with an MP uh, with a 1.5 if you want it as well. There's no way you can make a case to me to say Zero isn't up there at the minute. The only slight argument for me that you could make a case for Zero is to say, well, everyone gets two drones anyway. So four additional cams. Is is it that useful? I, d I think it is personally. And if you add zero to a stack and put the cameras in like I've just shown you, there's absolutely no way he's not considered top five. Third on the list, this may come as a bit of a surprise, Ying. I think Ying is absolutely unreal. Like, do you know how, do you know how oppressive getting Candal it is? Like, it's awful. Ying is absolutely fantastic. Coupled with the fact that she has an 81 round LMG that reloads as fast as an AR. And do you know how we, like, the recoil is barely anything? I've still got 44 rounds left. Just put that into context. I think people are really sleeping on Ying. Yes, Warden's got a bit of a uh, a, a rise recently in terms of, of, of play. But you know how many Warden uh, mains or Warden players realise they can see, like, through flashes and smokes? None of them realise it. None of them ever use the gadget. So just a little bit about Ying while we're talking about her then. Um, what some people don't know about Ying is you can actually put candalas through walls like fuse charges. Press and hold the candala, and when you get close to a wall, you'll see Ying's hand flip over. That means that you can place it on the wall. You also three that see those three um, dots in the middle of the crosshair get closer. That means you can put it on the wall and flash through the wall. Now, this isn't the best example of a wall because I'm going to be going through into barrels, and I'm not going to get around there quick enough to take advantage of it. But if you're on a wall here, and this is the door to get around the other side, put that on the wall. Pop the candela off, rush around the door, and then uh, peek at the wall that you want to. It doesn't make a whole lot of fuse, does unfortunately. It's like a weird little glitchy thing that you can't see through. But not a lot of people know that. And another thing that I want to talk about with Ying is when it comes to Ying's um, the fuse on her candela as well. And not many people, I feel, understand the mechanics of it. So you see that we've just held it and those three segments around the crosshair have lit up. Well, what that means is not how strong the candala is. It doesn't mean there'll be more flashes. It's just the charge time of the candala. If you don't hold the gadget button at all, the candala will roll for about two seconds before it goes off. It'll just roll. Like so. And then go off. What you're doing here when you charge it up is deciding how far that candala is going to roll or essentially how long the charge is once you throw it. 
if I once you charge it up, you saw we just tapped it and it rolled all the way over there. If we charge it up all the way and throw it, it'll stick to the floor straight away and go off. So you've got to think before you throw the candela, where am I sending the candela? Do I need the candela to roll? And they do bounce as well, by the way. So you can like do some. It's very short. You saw the distance of the fuse. Like I, I was here and rolled it to there and it went off. So it's not like you can start doing this across the map. But bear in mind, if and by the way, this is another thing. Use drone holes more with Ying. Like if you want a flash furnace here, you don't need to come around here and peek it some flash furnace like that. Make use of this drone hole and just roll it through the drone hole. But of course. Now you know that the charge would go, if we charge it up like this and we throw it at the drone, it's going to go off straight away. So what you can do is just sort of pre-charge it about there until it's on about like two of the segments of the circle, if that makes sense, and then roll it through. And if you roll it through like that, you know it's going to go off when it gets to about here. Don't forget as well from a defensive standpoint, when I made my Ying video a little while back, I said if you've got any clips of your shooting candelas, send them to me. If you're a defender and you see a candela being rolled in towards you, if you're quick enough, you can absolutely shoot the candela so it doesn't go off. You know what? When I was everyone, I was thinking about that in my head, then I was like, I'm gonna miss this. I'm gonna miss this. So don't forget, if you're like playing furnace and you do see a candela come rolling through that drone hole, if you can shoot it quickly enough, I mean I probably can't because my gun skills are horrendous, but if you see it coming through and you can shoot it, get it shot. Ying is unbelievably oppressive. If people think flashbangs are quality, which obviously they are. But Ying has four candelas and hard breach charges or smokes and an unbelievable gun. Like if you're playing a sort of attacking assault slash entry slash aggressive aggressive operator, Ying's right up there, man. Why is Ying not considered an entry? She's unreal. She is in higher. When you see a lot of comp players, a lot of players will play Ying and there's a reason for that. Because she's unreal, get her played more. Fourth on the list is Iona. I think this is probably up there with Ace as, as the least surprising option on here, but there's some things that are worth knowing about Iona, but in short, she brings a lot of utility that's information gathering as well as being able to destroy utility from the defenders. Two great guns. Yes, the ARX doesn't have much ammo, but I tell you what, it packs a punch. And the big one, of course, is these frag grenades, which are ever so powerful in Siege at the moment. Just imagine this scenario, right? We've got a bulletproof camera at the back, and we've got a, an Aruni gate in front of us here. Like, Iona can deal with this no problem. She can get through this herself. Doesn't need anyone to get involved. She can nade the bulletproof if she wants to. She can use a clone to get through this Aruni gate, which is... I mean, I think people forget how good sometimes this gadget is. Do you know how long... Look how long this lasts. Look at the time on the left. We've only just gone through halfway. It's insane. The mad thing is, as well, you can vault over things, you can go up ladders, which is not something you can do with drones. Well, you can go up drones with ladders, actually. I'll show you that one day. Um, you just go up, like, the little uh, nuts on the side of the, the ladder, but there's a little bit of a trick to it. However, there is something that is worth knowing about Iona. If you get your clone destroyed, the recharge time of Iona's clone is a lot longer than if you end the clone yourself. So, what I'm going to show you is two examples. One... I'm going to run around for a little bit with the clone. I'm going to end the clone myself, and then I'm going to get it destroyed by a Rooney, who, if I have done this right, is just around the corner here. Bear with me. A Rooney! There we go. Let's bring a Rooney just here. And what we're going to do is look at the timer from if I end the clone myself or if a Rooney shoots it. So what my point about this is, is if you're at, like running through an area with the Iona's clone and you can see that it's clear... End the clone yourself, because it will come back a lot faster. Don't The cooldown time is a lot less. Don't just run into sight and get your Iona clone shot for fun, because the cooldown timer is a lot longer, and we'll look at the difference now. So, in the clone we go. We run around till it's about halfway. Da, 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 da. Talk amongst yourselves. Boom. Now, watch the charge time. It flies back up from the bottom, yeah? What's that been? 10 seconds, maybe? If you watch the Iona video I made a good few months ago, I do actually go through the exact timings. I can't quite remember off the top of my head, but you saw how fast that was, right? It's about 10 seconds. Now, let's do the same thing, but we'll have a Rooney shoot the um, clone. There we go. Now, watch how long it takes to come back up. It's a lot longer, isn't it? We were already nearly the t at the top by when we ended the clone ourselves. Look how much longer it takes. So yes, if you've got a burn and a Rooney gate, then by all means destroy the clone. But if you've got the information that you need when you're playing a, uh, when you're playing Iona, do not just run your clone aimlessly into sight to like scare somebody or 
to make them like, oh, you know, they've shot the drone. Hey, scared you. You thought that was Iona. Because it negatively affects you. If you needed to use that again sooner, it's only just reset, but reset, by the way. I think it must be something like 10 seconds and 30 seconds, but I can't remember the exact timings. It's far more... Um, the cooldown period is a lot longer if you get it destroyed. However, you can't moan at Iona. By the way, do you know how good the G36 is with an extended barrel? Like, there's very little recoil. I know I haven't done a very good job of showing that there, but there's very little recoil. Even with an extended barrel, that's much better. Even with an extended barrel. And, you know, it's just, I don't know, man. She's just insanely good at the minute. And she used to have a gone six as well. That was mad. Frag grenades as well. There's no way if you're an entry, you're not playing Iona. That should have gone off on a Rooney. <laughs> Cheers, a Rooney. Fifth and final operator. It has to go to Buck at the moment, man. Buck is unreal. I feel like I've said that about every single operator. This operator's unreal. This one is unreal. Well, you know what? Buck actually is unreal. Um, you can stop the uh, train. Shut the train model thing up. Um, yeah, Buck's mad, isn't he? You think about the kit that he brings with him. He has two primaries. Not many people have that, where he's got his, his actual AR and his skeleton key. The skeleton key with the recent shotgun buff has been improved so much. If you ADS with the skeleton key now, it's madness. But the amount of vertical problems that Buck can make, this is one of my favorites. I've shown this before. I feel like I'm... This video, I feel like I've just shown a load of things that I've already shown. But this is one of my favorite angles to make with Buck. Is to shoot this wall and then shoot down. And you can hold freezer window from here. If you don't take out this wall first, you can't hold freezer window. It's a really nice angle. But imagine this scenario, right? We're upstairs with Buck. We're making a bit of vertical. We've got the scenario that uh, a lot of defenders will play where there's a shield on prep window here, right? So as Buck, we can open vertical into freezer. We can then come into this room here. I mean, by the way, forget that the bomb's here because I'm only playing this on my own. I don't have a choice of where the bomb is. We're pretending the bomb's down in kitchen. So we come and open the reinforced hatch. We make vertical. We can come and get rid of the shield on prep window, providing there's no ADS, obviously. We've still got another harbor each charge if we fancy it. We can then make a load of vertical. By the way, when you're making vertical with Buck downstairs here, what you want to do is look at where these trains are and follow the like the sort of tracks either side of the train. And the same here, like down here as well, and then down here, and you'll see what you get. But straight down the I mean, look at the vertical there. How easy is that and how quick is that? It's so good. I love playing Buck, man. He's AR as well, by the way. He completely slaps. Arguably, the only person who can do this better at the minute is uh, is Ram. Um, so, I mean, look at that there, right? What's that? We've, we've opened a reinforced hatch. We've got rid of a shield on prep. We've made vertical there, 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 and there. And we're like, what? It's taken us 40 seconds or something if we did all that one after another. He's so, so good. But it, you know what he's better at? And what he's really good for at the moment is solo queuing. You bring the gone six to help yourself. You bring the hard breach charges. You bro an insane weapon. I'm going to sneeze. Hang on. <laughs> hay fever is a shambles, man. If you ever get the chance to have hay fever, never, ever get it. But the, the weapon he has, the C8, is insane. Being able to swap to a shotgun and make holes to get kills like that is so, so good. I just don't think you can argue with Buck. He's probably got to be up there with Ace in terms of like an all-round really good operator, right? Who's better, Buck or Ace? Now I'm thinking about it. Maybe Buck's up there as the most all-round operator. I think he just brings so much. Don't forget with Buck as well, by the way. I'm, oh, I've got no skeleton key shots left. But don't forget you can do vertical upwards as well. A lot of people in Siege just go, yeah, vertical downwards. Oh, don't forget you can play, but you know, this is Cocktail above here. Like the where the desks are, where you'll find Echo and Maestro hiding behind these little desks here, right? Well, if that's the case, you can just swap to your skeleton key and just walk along here going bang, 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 bang. Pretend this is a skeleton key. Bang, 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 bang. And you've opened the floor along there. You're probably not just going to stand underneath it like this. But now the defender knows you're underneath. They can't stand there anymore. They've got to move somewhere. And if you're anchoring on site, if you're playing Echo or Maestro or you're playing the smoke and you're playing in this area here, this is like your safe haven here. Like this wall's reinforced and there's a rotate here. Like this area here is your safe haven. This is like where you're anchoring. This is where you're holding cigar. You can hold the skylight drop. You can run out and hold new uh, new hatch. Like this is where you want to be. This is like the nice place to be. This is where you know you're safe to an extent. Yeah, well, not if Buck's below. Just getting rid of the floor below you. So, yes, Buck can do the vertical above as well, which Ram and Sledge can't do. But I just think he's just unbelievably well-rounded and brings a lot to the table. And I think he's a good addition to any stack. I imagine if you had a stack of the operators that we've mentioned, if you brought Ace, Iona, 
Zero, Ying, and Buck, I don't think you'd go far wrong. So there we have it. Top five operators on attack in 2023, in my opinion. Yes, look, Dockerby is in there with a massive shout. Lion is potentially in there with a massive shout, but also Ram is definitely in there with a massive shout. And you know what I nearly put in this video? I nearly didn't put Zero in, and I nearly put Sledge in. Because Sledge is just that constant guy that's always there, always like got a high pick rate. He's so, so good. There's no way he's not top 10. He could possibly be top five if we did this video again at some point. As always, I'm saying, I've said this at the end of every video now, it's become a bit of like a sort of a sign off thing, but I genuinely mean this. If you've watched it 10 times, if you've watched it for 10 hours, or if you watch the video for 10 seconds, a genuine thank you. The channel's nothing without people who watch it. You are those people, you are that person. Thank you very much for watching the video and supporting an old man just making videos about Siege on the internet. I appreciate it more than I can put into words in a 10 second segment at the end of a video. It means the world, but other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.